Valentino giving me suits, gangsters. Death Row had really come out and really made a mark in the music business. Taking rap shine from New York had never been done. Death Row, you know, they was the best at that G-Funk style. And only people that can even hint or sniff in their direction was Bad Boy at the time. Puffy, he had started Bad Boy Records, you know, out there in New York. He had signed Biggie around this time. And he was starting to blow up with a lot of hits that used the same samples from the same era that influenced us. You know, but Suge, he wasn't down with that. First of all, I'd like to thank God. Second of all, I'd like to thank my whole entire Death Row family on both sides, you know what I'm saying? I'd like to tell Tupac to keep his guards up. We ride with him. And one other thing I'd like to say, any artist out there who want to be an artist and want to stay a star and don't want to, don't want to have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the videos, all on the record, dancing, come to Death Row. I think that was the moment, this period, the moment where everything Suge said was directed directly to Puffy. And he put that out there, Puff took it in, and the shit went to where it went to. It was a bold move also to do it in New York. Suge had a problem with Puffy. That was his personal problem. But the thing is, this one particular guy is a representation of the East Coast. So the East Coast took offense to it. That's what made the East Coast, West Coast war. The East Coast was behind Puffy because they supported him, and the West Coast was behind Suge. And he was behind us. By him being on our team and being our leader, we naturally have to ride with him. Divide and conquer is his primary tactic. In order for me to get the support I need, let me make sure that I alienate the ones that aren't going to be with me. They say it all the time in that culture. Either you're with me or you're against me. That's gang culture. Death Row and Bad Boy, Bad Boy and Death Row. So it's like, I'm looking at the room, you can see all the New York niggas like huddling up like, nigga, it's all of us versus them niggas. All these weak rappers, Nas, all these suckers, they battling off of East and West like this is a game, this ain't no game. Media did what they were supposed to do. They took a story and ran with it and turned it into something. Controversy and controversy sales. Every other question they would ask us was about East West. I blame the Source magazine, and I especially blame Vibe for creating an environment where people got killed. They were, you know, instigating something they didn't even understand. These nonviolent poets who escaped the hood were surrounded by violent people with no future. Ain't no in between if you with us or against us. Those who with us, we got love for you. Those who are not with us, you don't even exist. We didn't know the consequences and repercussions from what the youth would see out of it, what the streets would see out of it, and what the music industry would see out of it. We were just kids. Shakur was shot four times after leaving the Mike Tyson boxing match in Las Vegas in a car driven by Marion Suge Knight, the head of his label, Death Row Records. I should have got involved earlier. I should have put Suge and Puff in the room. I should have put people together. On March 9th, 1997, Biggie Smalls was shot and killed in Los Angeles. Smalls was leaving a music industry party. The shooting was eerily similar to Tupac's six months earlier. After Biggie's death, it's done too late, right? Uh, you know, I regret it because, you know, I could have maybe, maybe saved some lives. I should have did more. We were just trying to create music that made people feel good, uh, no matter where you was from. Uh, but when everything happened at the Source Awards in 95, it no longer became about the music. It became about what side you was on. And G-Funk was never the same after that. I think the key with music is that you're trying to make something that'll stand the test of time. 
when you're doing original music and you're bringing in melodies and you're bringing in the fusion of rap and R&B, I think that's the legacy of G-Funk. I do believe that that G-Funk era was when hip hop figured it out. It was like these guys were like, let's fucking smoke and drink and make the best fucking music in the world.